Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by MMA veteran Richie Whitson. Richie, how are you? I'm good. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Richie, you got a fight coming up September 29th at Pancrase 252. How's training been going for the fight? Oh, it's been going awesome, man. Just, uh, you know, getting back into it. I was just commercial fishing in Alaska, so this is going to be a short training camp, but I stayed in shape on the boat, so looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was going to be my first question. Um, you know, how long of a break did you take from MMA to, you know, kind of get what they say, quote, a real job? You know, how long was the break? Uh, it was about three and a half, four months. So, you know, I, I just did what I could. Like, I brought kettlebells on the boat, mm-hmm. I shadow box. You know, it, you're pretty tired working all day, sometimes working, you know, 20 hour days. So, oh. just whenever I had a chance, I'd do what I could. Mm-hmm. You're from Alaska originally, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Is that like a, a, a family thing, like like working up there, or is this just something where, you know, that was that, that was what you could find? You know, how, how did that opportunity come about? Um, I, you know, Sitka, Alaska, where I'm from, mm-hmm. it's a fishing town. Right. So I've been commercial fishing since I was young. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, you know, when you know people up there, it's pretty easy to get a fishing job, especially when you've been doing it since you were young. So... You know, I got a family now. You know, MMA wasn't paying the bills, so every once in a while I got to go make a few bucks. Mm -hmm. And now, after, you know, this fight, will you go back to doing that? You're just kind of taking the break now to prepare for this fight? Yeah, you know, I'd rather just train and fight, obviously. You know, that's Mm -hmm. ideal. But, you know, if next year rolls around, I'm not making enough money again, then I'll, I'll go, you know, take another three and a half months off and make some money. So, mm-hmm. How long were you on the shelf from when you last fought to you decided to take this job? See, I, I was I was supposed to fight for one FC last year, and then that kept getting pushed back. And then eventually I ended up having to take a last-minute fight in Canada, and that mm-hmm. was, I can't remember the exact date. So I only had one fight all of last year and then so that was like i think in april i fought the last april so that's Mm -hmm. the last time i fought so Mm -hmm. i've been on the shelf since then basically Mm -hmm. and what was the hold up was it just uh, you know the money wasn't right for for accepting a fight was it opponents couldn't be brought in what exactly caused this layoff you know i don't know they just weren't giving me a fight you know i i fought for them and i lost and then i was expecting to fight for them again and Mm -hmm. they just didn't give me a fight, so that didn't end up happening. So I ended up just having to go look for other fights. Mm-hmm. And you still have a contract with them. You're just waiting on a call. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd love to fight for them again. They're they're a big big company. I, I guess I am still under contract, mm-hmm. but I don't know if they're interested. I, I think I need to win a few. Mm-hmm. And if I understand correctly, you're no longer training at Team Quest. Is is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Mm-hmm. I. Uh, I moved to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, at uh, Trevor Prangley's oh, KA. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I noticed that because when, when I contacted you yesterday, it said that you were contacting me from Idaho, so I figured, uh, because I saw online that you were training at AKA, so I you know, kind of put two and two together. Trevor Prangley's got a gym, AKA affiliate, you know, kind of made sense. Yeah, yeah, it's just, just a nice area. It's, you know, I, I, my brother moved here, so I came out and checked it out, and you know, went into the gym to see how it is, and I saw those guys sparring in there, and they were going really hard. I was like, oh, all right, you know, this this might be a good place to train. You know, I got some training in there, and I loved it, so, you know, decided to move out here. Back to Team Quest for a second. Why did you decide to leave there? Was it things were just kind of getting stale? You were just doing the same old, same old, and, and you wanted to go, you know, somewhere else to, you know, maybe get some different looks? Or was it kind of you're currently on a three-fight losing streak? Was it that, you know, maybe a change would kind of, you know, light a spark and you'd be able to, you know, get back on the winning track? Why exactly did you decide to leave Team Quest? Yeah, I think it was a lot of things. I mean, nothing against Team Quest. They're great, and they've Mm -hmm. been great to me. You know, I got a lot of friends out there, Mm -hmm. and the training there is great, but definitely I've been losing. And, you know, I just, you know, needed a change of scenery. And, you know, it's a lot, it's really expensive to live there. Mm -hmm. I have no family there. So I just, you know, decided to make a move. I mean, I, I wouldn't be against living there again someday, but. You know, for now, I feel that this is the right move. Mm-hmm. 
Were there any other gyms that you were, you know, possibly in, in talks with, I guess you could say, to possibly training somewhere else? Was was there any other gym that was maybe in the picture, or was it just, you know, Trevor Prangley's gym was the place to be? Um, you know, I, I really like this area, too. Mm-hmm. So that had a lot to do with it. I was, I was uh, my buddy who I was on the show with, Santino DeFranco. Right. He, he trains at the lab mm-hmm. and at Ben Henderson's gym. Right, right. And so I was I was talking to him a bit and possibly moving out there, but you know, after I came here I just really kinda of fell in love with the area, so I decided, you know, this would be a good good place to raise a family. So. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now who are some of the guys that, you know, you spar with on a day to day basis and who are some of your coaches there? Um, well Trevor Prangley's pretty much the main coach mm-hmm. and uh there's some other guys that are fighting with me for Pancrase in Japan. It's uh, Will Nolan, uh, Daniel Swain, and Jordan Curry. Mm-hmm. So all, all real tough guys, good training partners. And then, you know, there's also guys in Spokane, like Sam Cecilia mm-hmm. yep. and uh, Mike Chiesa, Lyle Beerbrum. So there's, there's a lot of guys in this area. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. On to this fight, uh, Pancrase 252. How did they find you? Because, you know, you've been on the shelf for a little while. Uh, you know, how did this fight all come together? Yeah, you know, Tre- Trevor set it all up. Like I said, all those guys are fighting on the same card. Right. So, you know, I, when I started training with them, they, you know, threw my name out there, and Pancrase is interested, so. Mm-hmm. Now, I have a couple questions about this tournament, the format. It's an eight-man tournament. Is this going to be, you know, three fights in a night, or is it going to be, you know, one fight over the course of three shows? I think it's a fight over the course of three shows. That mm-hmm. that would actually be sweet. I'd totally be down for that. But, no, that, that's not how it is. It's over, it's over the course of three shows. Mm-hmm. And now, they named your opponent. You're going to be fighting uh, Hiroki... Nagata, I, I think that's how you say his name. You're going to be fighting him, but originally when they announced the eight participants of this tournament, they didn't say who the opponents were going to be. How long from when you got the offer did they immediately say you were going to fight this guy, or did that come later? Because they announced the eight participants, but they didn't announce the matchups until recent. You know, How, how did uh, they contact you about who you were going to fight? Um, yeah, it came later. Mm-hmm. Um, a guy from the gym ended up telling me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's no big. It's Everybody now is is tough. So I don't really care who I fight anymore, so mm-hmm. not a big deal. But yeah, it definitely came later. I didn't know until a month or so ago. Oh, oh, really? So how much do you know about your opponent? Not much. There's no footage on him. I, I think he's left-handed. I know he's you know he's got a lot of fights, but I, I really haven't done a whole lot of research on him. You know, except for looking on Sure Dog, and I tried to look for him on YouTube and I didn't find any videos so not not a whole lot to go off of mm-hmm. what, what do you know about him oh <laughs> your guess is as good as mine I, I never heard of I never heard of him before so, yeah <laughs> yeah I mean I know yeah. some guys that are in this tournament it's just you're not fighting any of those guys I could tell you like Dom O'Grady he comes from my area he's he's from Michigan here oh. and so so I know him pretty well and then um Kitaoka he's been fighting forever he's fought in all the big organizations so but you know it's unfortunate that the guy you're fighting you know neither of us know yeah 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 i mm-hmm. mean he's not a great record i think it's 19 18 and 12 but mm-hmm. you know right. yeah, I'm, I'm sure he's tough you know he's mm-hmm. only been knocked out twice you know just tough japanese guy but mm-hmm. I, I i think it'll be a good fight for me right right and also i've seen a couple recent Pancrase events and then, uh, where they've used a cage, and then I've also seen Pancrase events where they've used a ring. Do you know what you're going to be fighting in when September 29th hits? I think it's going to be in the cage. Mm-hmm. It should, it's their 20th anniversary show, so mm-hmm. I think it should be a big show. I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure they're going to be using the cage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I wasn't sure about that because always Pancrase, you know, when we think of Pancrase, we think of Boss Root, and then we, we think of Ring, but yeah. their last couple of shows have been caged, so I wasn't real sure. Yeah, and, and they've changed the rules, of course, now you can, you know, it's not palm and slapping, right, right, whatever right, it used to be, right. Pancrase rules. So. Yeah, it's not, I guess there's no elbows, and I think you can kick to the face on the ground, mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like the old pride rules. Mm-hmm. Are they going to have the marathon round, that 10-minute first, followed up by a five-minute second round, or is it going to be three fives? Do you know? I think it's three fives. Oh, 
I see, I see. And another question I have about this training for. So, and some of these other guys, like Will's fought over there twice. Daniel Swain fought over there as well. So, I think they would they would know. Mm-hmm. And one other question I have about this tournament is: Is this just a tournament? You know. For the sake of you know, it's their twentieth anniversary. Just just put on a tournament, you know, maybe get some, some excitement going, and just have you know eight guys fight uh, to see who the the last man standing is. Or is this you know to be the king of pan- a lightweight king of pancreas? Is, is it for a title, or is it just you know kind of a tournament title? Yeah, I, I think it's for the title, mm-hmm. king of pancreas. Mm-hmm. I see, which is a good title. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. What does it mean to you to you know get an opportunity to fight there? Is you know is this. Uh, uh, honor in fighting over there for this organization that's been around, you know, basically yeah. forever. I've since I started watching fighting, you know, I was right. watching mm-hmm. Pride, and my goal originally wasn't, you know, oh, I want to be in the UFC and this is no, I want to fight in Japan mm-hmm. just because the fans are, are they're different, you know. It's a, it just seems like it's going to be a different atmosphere, and you know, they have a lot of fighting history mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. So for me, this is the place I've always wanted to go fight. So it's a, it's a huge deal. I've been waiting for this since I started fighting. Mm-hmm. Well, it definitely makes sense because you were a pupil of Dan Henderson, who was one of the biggest stars in Japan at that time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He had some epic fights over mm-hmm. there. Yep. I mean, there's just so many great fights. So, mm-hmm. yeah, de- definitely a big deal for me to go over to Japan. Kind of a dream come true you know i've been waiting for this for a long time mm-hmm, mm-hmm. now is that how you're looking at this opportunity you're looking as as it as just you know fulfilling a dream or are you looking at this opportunity as you know a place where you can rebuild and uh you know maybe uh, get your name back out there and, and and get back on the right track are you looking at it more of a, of a dream coming true or are you looking at it as a way to you know get back on the right path both i mean just fighting over there is going to be great right but you know i'm yeah, I'm, being the king of Pancrase is going to get, you know, things going in the right direction, for sure. And, you know, I, I never should have lost three in a row. Right. I just feel like I have way too much skill. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to start winning lots of fights. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that was going to be my next question. I mean, no disrespect to any of those guys that you fought uh, these last three fights, but clearly on paper, in, just in my opinion, you're a better fighter than what you showed in those fights. You know, they executed on the on the day of the fight, but, um, you know, just my opinion, I, I feel that you're a better fighter uh, than those guys. Just curious, what went wrong for you in those fights? Where where did you slip up? You know, what, what weren't you able to do in those fights that, that caused these losses? Yeah, oh, nothing against them. I mean, they won. They won. Right, no excuses. Right. But you know, it's, it's mental. So it's you know mental. You know, you got you got to be in the right place. You know, it's a lot different when you you know have a family. You got to start providing for them. You know, financial. And just you know, is this what I want to do with the rest of my life? You know, you always you know doubt creeps in and. Yeah, just just doing it for a long time and not really getting to the place that I wanted to be. Just, you know, just mm-hmm. just one of those things. I just wasn't there mentally. And anybody mm-hmm. that, you know, trained with me in the gym, you know, I'd look like an all-star in the gym. And, you know, nobody that trained with me ever thought I was going to lose. But mm-hmm. it's all, it was all mental. Mm-hmm. So I, I think I'm, I'm there mentally and, you know, I'm in a better place. And, yeah, I think I'm going to go on a good win streak here. Mm-hmm. One thing that I wanted to ask you for a while now was after the Ultimate Fighter, what was the reasoning behind you not getting a fight on the finale? Because, you know, you had won your fight to get in the house, and, and yes, you, you you didn't, you know, get get a win once you made it in the house, but the guy you lost to, I believe you lost to James Wilkes, who ended up uh, winning the entire show. And usually when we see the Ultimate Fighter, usually if, if you make it into a house at least they give you one opportunity to fight in the UFC at the finale. I'm just curious, what was the reasoning behind them not getting you the fight? Uh, why didn't you get a chance to fight at the finale? Actually, I, I lost to Ross Pearson. Oh, that's it. I, I knew it was... But, I knew it was yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's one of those things. Certain seasons, they Ross use Pearson. everybody, even when there's not good mm-hmm. fights. Right. And then certain seasons, you know, they, they don't use everybody when there is good fights. And my season, I felt like there was awesome fights but mm-hmm. they only used you know said out of, out of the 16 people that were in the house only the people that won a fight in the house got to fight on the finale oh oh i see so i lost in the first round 
automatically didn't get to fight. I was, you know, thought for sure they were going to use me, but then they didn't. So mm-hmm. it's just is what it is. And then, you know, they told my manager that I win, you know, three in a row and I'd be back. Well, I won two in a row and then I fought Harris Sarmiento in Hawaii and lost a uh, split decision, five round split decision, which. You know, even the hometown crowd beat that decision. So, just good bad luck. Mm-hmm. Now, the second part to that question I wanted to ask you was, during all this time since that show aired, all these years that have gone by, I've always wondered why a fight between you and Jason Pierce never happened, because there was a little bit of bad blood between you two guys, and I always wondered why, with all these regional shows that are out there these days, all these promoters that are putting on fights, I always wondered why no one decided to put that fight on. That was a fight that had a built-in storyline, and was there ever you know, a chance of that fight happening? Were you ever contacted by anybody and, who asked you, hey, do you want to fight this guy? Well, I mean, I talked a lot of shit to that guy. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he, he quit fighting. Oh. So it never, you know, I, I put a challenge out there. And then I think he was just done. I mean, he kind of got humiliated on TV a little mm-hmm. bit. So I think he just kind of, you know, called it quits and didn't, didn't want to do it anymore. So, mm-hmm. you know, it is what it is. I, I haven't thought about that guy in a long time. That's funny you bring him up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that was the one thing that I always wondered, uh, you know, the years later. I mean, obviously it was, I think, 2009 is when that show aired. And I, I've always wondered about that because, you know, there's there's so many regional shows out there i wondered why you know no promoter ever ever dug that up again because um a guy who was on uh the season that you were on and a guy who didn't make it onto that show waylon lowe and cameron dower uh waylon lowe didn't make it in the house but cameron dower did those guys ended up fighting in world series of fighting because of i guess they had some history because i guess cameron dower got mad because uh waylon lowe made it into the ufc even though he failed to make it onto the show so i always wondered why you and pierce never got into a cage somewhere. Yeah, if he, if he would have accepted a fight, somebody would have made that fight happen. Because, mm-hmm. you know, he fights at 170, and I said, hey, I'll move up and fight you at 170. But mm-hmm. but at that point, I think he was retired from fighting. So, it's you know, no chance of it ever happening. Mm-hmm. Going into this Pancrase lightweight tournament, are you looking at this as, you know, a do or die situation? You know, if you win, you, you'll continue fighting, and if you lose, you know, four losses in a row, that's kind of hard to recover from. And is this something where if you lose here, you will consider, you know, maybe hanging up the gloves? Is it that serious of a situation, or regardless of the outcome, you, you will continue fighting? No, I mean, it, it's a big deal because I'm, I'm going to be the king of Pancrase, mm-hmm. you know, and that's right. going to do a lot for my career. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I'm only 27 years old, right. and I enjoy fighting. Like, I like, even, you know, every fight I went out there and I lost, even though I wasn't there mentally, like, I, I enjoy it. Like, I like to go out there and fight. So, no. I mean, 10 losses in a row, as long as I'm having fun and I like going out there to fight, I'm, I'm going to keep doing it. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. Uh, Richie, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you'd like to thank, and is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? Um, I don't have any sponsors right now. Really? Nobody out there wants to sponsor me. <laughs> huh, really? Why not? So, I, I, you know, haven't been actively looking, mm-hmm. really. And, yeah, just, just no sponsors. I've just been focused on working mm-hmm. lately. So, yeah. But, no, just watch my fight at Pancrase. You know, it's, I'm definitely getting back on track. So, yeah, thanks for having me. Sure, Richie. Thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. And best of luck September 29th at Pancrase 252. Yeah, thanks a lot, man.